Okay, we're here live in Las Vegas for day two wrap up for Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World. We just do an interview after interview, trying to extract the signal from the noise. That's what we do. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, let's wrap up day two and put it in the books. Um, day one was great. Yesterday we had, you know, um, a lot of the top execs around Flash Key, Key of Flash. But here today we had two key guests, one was Pat Gelsinger, and the other one was the Viper team, and all the storage, software-defined storage. So, I got to ask you first about Viper. That's the hot story here. You know, we'll get to Pat Gelsinger in a second, but Viper is their big announcement. That's the game changer. NetApp put out a position on it just recently. Um, does that hold any water? And, uh, well, first talk about Viper, and then we'll talk about the competitive response. Well, I've seen two, yeah, well, okay, so Viper, you know, first of all, I first saw what was called at the time Project Born. I first heard about it in an analyst meeting back in November. Jeremy Burton, of all people, stood up at the analyst meeting and he, John, he was, I expected he was going to talk about marketing, like he always does, our messaging, our positioning, everything else. He spent like an hour and a half going deep into what was then Project Born. And frankly, my jaw dropped. Well, first of all, you had this so-called marketing guy really going deep into the technology. The second was, it was here's EMC saying we're going to extract function out of the controller and make it available. We're going to separate the control plane and the data plane. That was you know, last November, okay, they've been working on it for a couple of years. And then they released it today, Not frankly not a ton of new information that we didn't have um, from you know, some of the earlier meetings, but some of the details in terms of shipments and availability. I think that the fact is it's early. Um, two years is not enough time to build out a full management stack as I've been saying. And so, but what's impressive about this is the vision. Classic EMC, they've laid it out. Um, they, in my opinion, are saying, look, yes, we're going to participate in OpenStack, but we have an alternative platform that you should start writing to. Now here's where I think it gets really interesting. You asked about the competitive responses. NetApp basically came out with a, with a response that said, hey, we have this too, welcome to the party. Um, I don't think NetApp made nearly as big a splash. I, I, just, I, don't, I have to dig into it, you know, you Google on the web, there's not nearly as much information on it, uh, on NetApp's on-tap software-defined storage. And then Dave Wright from SolidFire also came out with a response, he put it on a blog today, and, and essentially what he was saying is, hey, OpenStack is the way to go. OpenStack is open, and he's arguing that Viper is closed. Now, that's why we were, I really wanted to ask Amitab his take on open. And I thought his answer was a good one. The entries in, uh, to the system are open, you can you know, put, bring your own function, um, you can tie into the system through the API, but oh, the back end piece of that, that IP, you got to pay for that. And that's how they're going to make money. I don't have a problem with that. What I think is going to happen though, John, I think you're going to see alternative platforms emerge. Uh, I think other companies are going to fight for that platform. I don't think they're just going to let EMC run away with it, and I think that's really where it gets interesting. And I think there's OpenStack, and I think that's going to be HP's play. You know, I think you got to look at what Oracle's going to do. Oracle's going to have a red stack. I think you got to look at what IBM's going to do. They got a lot of resources, and obviously there's EMC. And I think those are the big players. So that's what I see. Wow. Um, and a big part of this is VMware. We had VMware CEO Pat Gelsinger on today. Love to get your take, John, on, on that. Well, first yeah, I want to comment and comment to what, uh, to what you just said about OpenStack and yeah. what I think is happening. I think it's very, very clear that the cloud mobile social vision that we had at SiliconANGLE in 2009 when we launched it, which is now mainstream, is moving the market. And here's what's happening. EMC is clearly going down that path. That's their messaging. SAP next week, we expect to see some big moves around SAP next week at Sapphire, big player. IBM's making some moves, they got a new guy running storage. It, again, all this is converging. The big players are moving and transforming their entire businesses to position themselves for this new world. And to me, I think the open source community around OpenStack is a lightning rod. I don't think it's OpenStack so much, Dave, um, about what they're doing and the mechanics of OpenStack other than the fact that the, how it's set up and the multi-vendor transition to openness makes OpenStack the lightning rod for this, this OK Corral, this gunfight at the OK Corral, where everyone's going to battle it out for leadership. And I agree with you. I don't think HP and IBM and the big whales are going to let anyone just walk away with this, especially Amazon. So, so the, the, 
the open stack is the the uh, OK Corral and there's going to be a gunfight there. And I think everyone's going there and that's going to be great. I think it's phenomenal. And I think that's democracy in, in the tech community and that's what open source brings to the table. And I think that I learned was the multi-vendor discussion in the 80s and 90s which created great standardization and great wealth creation was a mandate for all vendors. And I well, think OpenStack is the modern version of multi-vendor. Well, and I think that you're right on on that. And, and of course, you know, I'm glad you brought up uh, Amazon because Amazon's a, a, a major player in this space. So let's face it, <laughs> Amazon's just, Amazon's growing at like 100% a year, <laughs> okay, in infrastructure. There's, and they're not small. You know, everybody else talks about, oh, we're growing at triple digits when they're growing from a small base. You know, 3PAR maybe, you know, for a while there was growing at triple digits and that's been a pretty big base, but we're talking about uh, probably a two to two to two and a half billion dollar entity growing at 60 to 70%. So Amazon is an infrastructure player, major, major force. Your point a couple weeks ago about OpenStack is as much a competitor to Citrix, VMware, et cetera, the traditional enterprise guys is I think right on. Now, it's interesting, I go back to Dave Wright's response, I, I say, I mean, Jeremy Burton, you said it the other day, I agree with you, he holds marketing clinics. I mean, basically, you know, the competition come out, I'll read Dave Wright's real quick. Yesterday, EMC sent out a very impressive press release. Okay, so they say it's a press release, imply it doesn't have any meat. You know, <laughs> it's closed and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, 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 and some of that is true, but I think the point that people are missing is EMC is saying, look guys, we have 30% of the market, this is how we, and to get 60% of the market. We're going to open up this platform to a point. We're going to allow developers, partners, our ecosystem to write to that platform. Who can compete with that? Amazon can, IBM can, Oracle can. Who else? I think you know, it's, HP I, can I, I with OpenStack. Well, it's going to come down to muscle. It's going to come down those are the guys with the muscle. It's going to come down to muscle and capabilities. So they're going to everything's going to bring everything to the table. And this is what I love, and you know, in my experience in the business, Dave, I've seen this transformative movie before, and that's a, it's a fun time. It's a competitive time. There's going to be a lot of losers and some big winners, and that's just competition. And I now, think it's great. Now, now NetApp is interesting because NetApp has always been one of these companies that has figured out how to compete with EMC. NetApp's going to transition. It's got you know bringing out you know, cl clustered on tap has been the next major bet for NetApp. And NetApp's response was essentially, um, you know, they didn't really trash EMC, they basically said, we provide this capability, you know, an open, flexible storage virtual machine technology in clustered data on tap. Now they haven't marketed it nearly, you know, to the big bang that EMC has, but in classic NetApp fashion, they were very respectful, they didn't, they didn't trash EMC, I don't even think they mentioned EMC, they basically said, CIOs are trying to make technology more responsive, and they basically said, hey, this software-led world is something that we embrace. We welcome others in the industry to join, so classy, you know, NetApp, NetApp move. Um, what's missing is, you know, the marketing sizzle there, and that's what, you know, EMC has, has put forth, and now it's sort of a race to execution. So I think this is the, a great move uh, to, to do a number of things. Lay out your vision for your customers, freeze the market on OpenStack, you know, try to differentiate from your competition, and also showcase some of the new innovation that's happening inside of EMC. I mean, Amitab, great interview. The tech guys, very impressive. You know, people say EMC can't develop organically. You know, we'll see if this, whole, if this takes hold. Well, I mean, I think freezing the market is an interesting discussion. I mean, it, you know, I think EMC would push back on that, but I think it's a legitimate business strategy. H, I mean, EMC, and even HP for that matter, you know, these are big companies that can't move as fast, although EMC is moving faster. Um, but they knocked the messaging out of the park, and obviously we cover them pretty And uh, maybe that's closely. a byproduct, right? Maybe freezing the market's a byproduct, but it's, it is happening. Well, they're just slower to move than I mean, I'm not saying that was necessarily their intent, or the reason why they did it, but they did it. Well, yeah. the NetApp response is, is, a, is, is like, it's like, it's like the debates, right? The Republican response, you know, it's like, they have the response, and, and I like it. I'm actually impressed that NetApp actually responded. Because you know why? In the era of social media, Dave, that is the right thing to do. Get a statement out there and follow up. And I'm, you know what? I'm excited by that. And I think Jeremy Burton wants to play ball with NetApp in a way that's competitive. He's looking at NetApp, and he's looking at all these competitors, He's not even thinking about them, in my opinion. I think he's going to spend, and he's going to blow it out on the marketing, and I think it's an opportunity. Okay, the problem with NetApp's response, I agree with you, I, 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 like, I like that the fact they responded. The problem is when you Google storage virtual machine SVM NetApp, 
The first thing that comes up is Hitachi. The second thing that comes up is Silicon Angle's report on NetApp's response. And then a blog on software-defined storage. So my point is, it wasn't announced as a platform. It wasn't announced what as wasn't a- What wasn't announced as a, as a platform? The NetApp's no, they supposed software-defined well, storage solution, the storage virtual machine. Well, Brendan Howe was just making a comment about that, so I think it's more He's saying, a, okay, we have it there. No, they I'll tell you what this yeah. says. This is, this, is like, this is like polite version, you know, the Boy Scouts version of EMC's full of shit. <laughs> I don't think he's saying EMC's full of crap. I think he's saying was, we already have this. And yeah. I'm saying, well, okay, well, if I Google it, what's all the hubbub? But there is a big hubbub around software-defined storage. Everybody's talking about it. VMware sort of laid down the gauntlet right. last summer. So, and NetApp's talking about it, HP's talking about it, EMC's talking about it, IBM's talking about it. Everybody's talking about software-defined. So, <clears throat> all I'm saying is, everybody's going to do what I did. They're going to Google that, and they're going to say, what's yeah. there? So, now, in my opinion, John, it's up to NetApp to say, look, we have a unique architecture here. Now we're going to show you how we're going to respond, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we're here in day two wrap up. Just to kind of go through my notes here, Dave, just some highlights, the keynotes, obviously, were Tucci. Um, really, it was just commander in chief, the general of the army, he's got the swagger, you know, he's, you know, just so close to clipping coupons, you know, he's really having a great time. He's got a smile on his face, he's got a spring in his step, he's a proud papa, he's going he's gonna to go out in a blaze of glory. Okay, and, and, and that's really the clear path. Um, then, and, and that was fun. No new information from Tucci, in my opinion. Um, just the classic you know, innovation slide, three waves of innovation. Um, Moritz's presentation was great. I liked his presentation a lot. Um, gives us some insight around Pivotal. Um, but the, the highlights for me today were John Royce, the new CTO. John Rose. Rose, <laughs> I mean, John Rose, new CTO. Yeah, he was good. Phenomenal, very <laughs> impressed with him. Um, I asked him some kind of out of the box questions and some pointed questions. You asked him some pretty pointed questions. He nailed both. He could hit the marks on the, on, on the pointed questions, but he, he answered the 20 mile stair question pretty well. He knew what he was looking at down the road. I was impressed by that. I like the fact that he's not a storage guy. You know, that's a, Very impressive. Yeah. He, he's like, I see a future of, and he described it. And I like when, he, when, when I hear tech guys talk like that, it means they have vision. Gelsinger was great. I love seeing him as the commander in chief of VMware. Um, and I thought he was mess right on message. And Pat scripted. I mean, he's scripted to the point of, you know, he's got this in RAM. What do you think about Pat? Oh, I think Pat was, <clears throat> you know, animated. I think he's the right guy for the job. I love the way he described how it came about. That, you know, I had this sort of big data project, and Paul had this other stuff. I call it misfit toys. You know, I don't think he probably probably didn't like that too much, but. They weren't getting the attention they needed. They put this thing together. I, yeah, just it, to me, it underscores the quality of EMC's executive team, their ability to attract really good people. When Donatelli left, I was, you know, Donatelli's a good executive. We know Dave. He's been on the Cube a number of times. He's excellent, right? They bring in Gelsinger. I mean, the guy's good. He's a tech athlete, to use your term. Yeah. And uh, so, and I think the interesting thing to me, John, about that is he's taking over VMware at a time. I think it's. I think there's choppy waters here. I mean, I think competition is heating up. I think VMware's you know, pricing snafu a couple summer ago, summers ago got customers thinking, whoa, wait a minute. <clears throat> Hyper-V now you know, with Windows Server 2012 coming out, OpenStack, you know, a I lot. Think I think given the new architecture of Pivotal out there and Moritz and Gelsinger, I think it's a great move for Pat. I think he's going to have uh -huh. essentially the future version of Intel at its disposal. I think he's going to build a culture of innovation. We know they're hiring a new CMO, so uh, you know we're digging into that. They got to retain search out from what I'm hearing in around town in Palo Alto. So you know I think Pat's going to kind of recast that out to be the cloud version of Moore's Law. And I think he said it. I'm going to build my own stuff. We're going to have all this stuff available. So it's exciting, Dave. I am really, really pumped. Uh, day two is in the books. Yeah, I'm proud to be here, John. I mean, this is, uh, I have to say, we got a great location, you know, nice backdrop, <laughs> that's good guests, so. Thanks know. to the team, thanks for watching. This is day two wrap up. Tomorrow we'll be here all day. We're going to have big interviews tomorrow. We got uh, the, the president, David Goulden, Paul Moritz, Jeremy Burton, and a slow of guest packed house all day. That's a wrap up from day two. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>